The United Artist Theater, 150 Bagley Street, downtown Detroit, Michigan. Built 1928. Closed 1974. This historical and gorgeous gothic monster theater was arguably one of Detroit's most challenging abandoned locations to access, and the reason was simple. It was locked up properly, had a continuous security presence, was under constant surveillance, and most importantly, it was alarmed. However, it was not always this way. Let's do this shit. Can't stay out here too long. As you see, there's people everywhere. There's a dude walking right there. Security is right there. But they're not in their car, so I don't know where they're at. <laughs> Probably in here waiting for me. Can't really climb over this fence as you see. I got through that one. Now I gotta get through this one. Could squeeze through here, but that's pretty tight. There's nowhere else to go. So, I'm gonna work a little magic here. See you in about a minute. Okay, we're back. See that? Skill. Pick up a few tricks along the way. Now if I can just lock it back up. Voila. Now, let's try all these doors. That opens, but it's got a lock. Solid. Oh, hell no. Those locks are unpickable. I ain't getting that one. I can tell you right now. And that's a fresh board. Okay, so there's one more door that actually leads to the theater. This part leads to the bank, the old United Artists building and bank. You gotta be careful because you can see they were just here yesterday. Sanitized stations, men working above. This is where the marquee used to be. Look at those faces. So it doesn't go anywhere down there, so all the doors are locked with padlocks. See you in a second. All right, got it. Well, I thought I had it. Oh, there we go. Voila. Into the theater. Dark, get some lights. This place is really falling apart. But it's just got so many cool like nooks and crannies in here. Most of it's stripped out. But like, look at this old area here. some ceiling detail. Another cutout over there. This place has just seen better days. There's no saving it, I guess. It's unfortunate too, because it's so beautiful. Look at this railing, it's just collapsed right here from the demo. They've dug into the sidewall of the auditorium, but that's about as far as they've gotten. You can't really get through here, but I'll show you. See, this is the demo where they started right here. This whole back, or side wall, I guess, is exposed. Big old chunk taken out. But the I-beams are still there. And there's the actual stage. But 
this old railing here. Most likely original 1928. Long before downtown Detroit had made its now storied comeback, the United Artists Theater, or UA for short, was just one of many abandoned buildings scattered throughout the downtown area. In fact, in 2004, the Detroit Free Press included the 18-story United Artists Building, which is connected to the United Artists Theater, as one of the dirty dozen most offensive abandoned skyscrapers located throughout downtown Detroit. It also didn't help matters that back in those days, almost all of the abandoned buildings in downtown Detroit were left wide open, becoming havens for junkies, vandals, the mentally ill, and the homeless. The United Artist Building was certainly no different, and by the early 2000s, almost all of the exterior windows had been graffitied over with colorful depictions of Mayan glyphs and other random odds and ends. There were several homeless people that had also made the United Artist Building their temporary residence, most of them squatting on the upper floor. Completely contrasting the United Artist Building was the United Artist Theater. Unlike the high-rise building connected to it, the theater itself had been largely left untouched. Although the theater was in complete disrepair and nearly in ruins, most of it was all natural decay that had happened over the 30-something years that it sat ignored, neglected, as well as being wide open to the elements of the notorious, harsh, and brutal Detroit winters. There is a saying that poverty is one of the greatest preservers of history, and this couldn't be a more accurate statement when it came to the United Artists Theater. The complete and total lack of any interest in Detroit real estate for over 30 years meant that virtually nothing was renovated, restored, or demolished, especially when compared to other major U.S. cities such as Chicago and New York City. Many of these buildings became like time capsules, as if one could take a step back into time to when the building was in its prime, as well as a glimpse into its final days of operation. The United Artists Theater in Detroit was actually the third United Artists Theater that was designed by famous architect C. Howard Crane. It was built in 1928 after the Los Angeles and Chicago United Artists Theaters. All three theaters were designed in the Spanish Gothic style architecture and were very similar in many aspects, but the Detroit United Artists Theater also had some major differences. The most notable difference was the Detroit United Artists Theater had a 13-story office tower that was built adjoining the theater. C. Howard Crane was faced with an irregular shaped parcel of land but made the very best of it giving the theater a round lobby with a dome ceiling connected to a long entry corridor with gilded Art Deco-inspired maidens on the walls between full-length wall mirrors. A marble staircase also led up to the mezzanine and balcony levels of the theater. The 2,070-seat auditorium, which was said to be nearly acoustically perfect, was fantastically decorated with gothic plasterwork, ornate metalwork, and brass light fixtures like something out of a medieval cathedral. The Detroit United Artists Theater was definitely more dramatic and breathtaking than any of the other United Artists Theaters that C. Howard Crane had previously built. Here we go. Kind of exposed over here, I don't like it, so I gotta be quick. It's pretty lucky to get in here. Had to use a little skill. Which uh, I'm grateful to have. Otherwise I wouldn't be in here right now. Look at this original. It's gotta be original, this woodwork. Railing, ironwork here on the railing. Most likely all original, 1928. see spots of the architectural details are still intact but just in sections over here look at how much of the ceiling is actually missing and then the centerpiece dome is really bad show you from the other side so you can get better lighting on it get an interesting perspective of the demolition that's started See the projector booths again over there on the left. And here's the demo part. So sad. It's all going to be gone in a matter of weeks.
almost a hundred years old. Look at all the detail. Sad. This would have all been the seats, obviously. Seats have been gone for a long time. I don't think I've ever seen anybody take a photo with the seats in it. Look at the proscenium arch right there. Loaded with details. Amazing plaster work. That's all still intact too. That's incredible. Some more detail just hanging on by a thread over there. This will all be gone in a matter of days. Erasing this building that's been here for almost a hundred years. There's the stage. Let's get a zoom in shot of that stage. Wow. Hey, we're coming up to check the projector booth, but I know there's no projectors in here. But at least you can see. These are obviously the projector windows here on the pulley system. Pretty sweet. An old speakers. Some more projector windows here. Big old window there. I'm not sure what these are. Projector stuff, Am Ampex. Look at how old this stuff is. I love it. And this thing is still, jeez. Still got its glass in there and everything. Sketchy climb into the projection room here. It's literally nothing over there. Look at that. And it's falling. Jesus. This is what we just climbed up. So sketchy. <laughs> to get to the projectors. Those are the stairs that lead up to the upper balcony. Sure don't look very supported, do they? All the supports are rusted out and busted. But it's cool because it's still all here. All the original ironwork. Although rusty, it's still here. These stairs are brutal. Opening night for Detroit's United Artists Theater was February 3rd, 1928 and featured the Gloria Swanson hit Sadie Thompson with the star herself addressing the full house audience and opening the curtains for the very first time. The theater continued to have great success with sold-out shows nearly every weekend for almost 30 years straight. 
Major remodeling in the 1960s removed the original four-story marquee and replaced it with a plain unattractive one, which was also eventually removed in 2005. Also, the building's stately facade with its beautiful arches and terracotta work was lost under a huge covering of dark featureless marble. The theater's lobby also received a similar facelift, covering much of its spectacular decor and its dome was covered by the always dreaded drop ceiling. By 1970, the United Artists Theater began to struggle, so they decided to try to show X-rated films and slasher flicks. However, it was all for nothing, and in 1974, the United Artists Theater permanently closed. A year later, most of the theater's original furnishings, fixtures, and artwork was auctioned off. In 1984, the United Artists Building had also closed. Its tenants, including AAA and the People's State Bank, had all moved to the surrounding suburbs. Since then, both the United Artists Building and Theater have sat abandoned and neglected. Over the years, there have been multiple plans to try to restore the theater, but every time the plans never materialize and always fall through. In the meantime, the theater has fallen into serious disrepair, its once stunning decor and details all but gone, stripped of anything remotely salvageable, and its exterior literally crumbling away. The days of enjoying downtown Detroit as a giant playground are long gone, but the memories will forever remain. Eventually, as downtown Detroit became gentrified and crowded, real estate became a primary focus of city planners and developers. One of the very first things to happen was the long vacant United Artists Building and Theater was sold to Mike Illich, the multi-millionaire and founder of Little Caesars Pizza. Illich, who also owned the Detroit Red Wings and Detroit Tigers, took ownership of the building and in 2005, in preparation for Super Bowl 40, he buffed the spray-painted windows of the United Artists Building, kicked all of the homeless people out, locked and boarded up the place, and eventually installed alarms. For me personally, the United Artists Building and Theater were always a dream to explore, especially when I first started urban exploring in 2008. Back then, I had somewhere seen the Frenchie's Coffee Table book, The Ruins of Detroit, and in that book, they had both a photograph from the UA Theater and one from the UA building showing an old rusty bank vault down in the basement. I was in complete awe of this, but never imagined that one day I'd have the opportunity to see it for myself. During those early years of exploring from 2008 to about 2010, I had tried the United Artists Building and Theater several times without any luck, and in one instance even set off an alarm, which after that I surely thought I'd never see it. Then the day finally came. It was 2011 and I just happened to be driving by the United Artists Theater and quickly did a double take when I noticed a missing board on the back window and the alarm blaring loud. I watched and waited for what seemed like hours and nobody came. I quickly went home, grabbed my camera and gear and headed right back to the theater. I was definitely going to take full advantage of this once in a lifetime opportunity. I ended up climbing in through the window and in doing so I cut myself on the grate and tore my sweatshirt in the process but I wasn't going to let that or the still blaring alarm stop me from living my dream of exploring this majestic location. I went into the theater and the building and was able to explore both of them capturing images of the theater and the old rusty bank vault in the basement. As you can imagine I was super ecstatic that I had accomplished my mission. As the United Artists Theater is now demolished, it will always hold a special place in my heart. The theater, even in its ruined condition, still seemed like a masterpiece as the gothic-inspired details and the plasterwork almost looked as if it was slowly melting away. As much as I wish they could have saved this majestic theater, I was happy that they were able to at least save the building. The 18-story tall, 200,000 square foot United Artists building is currently being redeveloped into mixed residential and retail space. May the United Artists Theater rest in pieces. It's another seating area, balcony. You can see how the detail used to be right here. So you'd overlook the chairs down below. Looks like it was all wood. And there's another projector booth there. Look at the lights hanging. Those are original. I don't know if they're original, but... Definitely old school, still hanging. Could be original. But these were all curved and they had lights in them. You can see the yellow bulbs going all the way down. So they must have lit up. Here's inside the other projection booth. 
Absolutely nothing in here. Except a couple of pulley doors for the projectors, and that's about it. Oh, and a sink and a toilet. And that plaster work is just nothing like it. It's out of this world. You certainly wouldn't expect this beauty to be right here in downtown Detroit. God, the more I look, the more I see. Never even noticed some of this stuff in here. Look at that shield up there. Different colors, there's reds and golds, maroon. Wow, shield's going all the way down. And then over here, look at this. Most likely Puavic tile. Look at the stairs. Look at the carpeting on the stairs. Jesus. But this Pawabic tile is amazing. It's so colorful. I never even noticed that and it goes all the way over there. Yikes. It's not very safe. Oh boy. Oh snap. I'm not going much further. So I'm up here on the stage now and it's in terrible shape. It's like hard for me to even get center because I'm so scared to step anywhere. It's like stained glass type. Look at that, another one over there. Wow, I never even noticed that before in all the times I've been in here. There was one there too that's missing. Everywhere you look, there's just plaster work all over the floor. Beautiful, intricate work that's just crumbling. You can see right here, it's actually hanging. See, it's still intact here. And it's just, look at that. It's like a horse hair plaster work. Used to have horse hair in it, I think, to hold it together. And here's pieces of it hanging. And look at that hair. Super wild. Oh look, you can see this would have been lit up. You can see the lights up there. This circular detail here. You can see the rusted framework for the plaster. So crazy. This one too. Look at that plaster work just melting away. It literally looks like it's melting away. Here's the lobby I was trying to show you guys, or the part of the lobby I was trying to show earlier, but it was so dark. And it's still dark, but maybe you can see some of the detail there in that outlook. And then the rest were mirrors on this side. There's another one, you can see the mirror is intact a little bit there. Incredible detail around it. And then it used to have more, but they're all gone. It's just crazy. See some of the detail here. And you can see the mirrors up there. So those are all mirrors up there. One of them's missing.
super crazy. Look at the detail everywhere you look. It's really dark in here, so it's hard to see, but look at those windows up there. And then the maidens that overlook the lobby. Incredible lobby. Same thing over here except the one maiden. Two maidens are pretty much gone. Let's see all this is gone. This is probably some sort of detail right here. You can see the wood frames for the plaster work most likely. It's an old, looks like a fridge or vending machine of some sort. Freezer, I don't even know. Somebody tried to pry it open. Yeah, it's a cooler vending. God, I still don't know. Old school vending machine, maybe. Probably been in here since the 60s or 70s. This flavor is out. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, they were mirrors. Okay. See, here you go. I stand corrected. So it was for mirrors that lined this area. Not plaster work. You can see they got keep out signs everywhere. You can really see the infrastructure. Should be able to get this one too. Alright. Bingo. Now this is the United Artists building and bank. Which doesn't connect to the theater. They're separate. But it does have an old bank in it. Pretty cool ceiling though. Nice detail. But I'm gonna show you the bank as like a little bonus to the theater. So this is actually the uh, lobby of the bank. You can see some of the architectural details in the ceiling again. This is gonna be housing. This is the building that's going to be housing, and the theater is going to be demolished. Let's go check out the vaults downstairs. And climb over this thing. Nice. I think these are. Granite stairs, maybe, or marble? All this, actually. Yeah, look how beautiful that stairway was. These walls. I got the abatement plastic everywhere. Here's one of the vaults here. This one doesn't open. Or it's the back side of the other one, I guess. We just can't open this side. This was the desk for the bank vault.
pretty cool. Old, very old too, look at that. Super rusted. You can just see all the rust too. Just coming right off this thing. The only way to get to the other one is through this little cubby here. This closet, look at it, it's got old hats, old decorations, Christmas stuff. Old Visa thing. Jeez, so much old stuff back here. Here, and you've got the other vault. Got a little robber here. My man's got some cash, some US mint. He's got his pistol. And you got the Monopoly guy over here. Love it. I've always loved these murals here. Old payphone. <laughs> Super cool. school one. Look at that survival crackers tag. Let's take a look inside the vault. A lot of people haven't done this either. This vault is old and it's pretty damn cool because it's so rusted. I remember first seeing this vault and the Frenchie's book about De abandoned Detroit back in like 2008. When I first started my first year of exploring. And I remember trying to find it and find out where it was. And I found out that it was in the United Artists building. And it took me maybe a year, maybe two, to finally get in and do it for my first time. And of course, I was not a good photographer back then, so had to come in and reshoot it a few times over the years to get decent photos of it, which I do now have. So I'm not gonna reshoot this because I'm happy with my photos. But I figured I would show you guys the bank vault in the United Artists building. Instead of just the theater as like a bonus. This is pretty cool though, look at this. Old circular vault. You can see it's like fraying away. And these ones over here. And look, it almost looks like it was underwater. They're just all rusted. Any money? here you got there are just open with this some of the safe deposit boxes in them some are missing most of them down here are still in there though look at that big ones down there at the bottom that's pretty sweet These 
Safe deposit box is all stacked up here. And one more pan looking back at the vault. And that is going to wrap it up, my friends, for the United Artists Theater and United Artists Building slash Bank. Now let's get the hell out of here before I get caught. And the best thing about this is you can lock it right up. You can lock it right up so nobody even knows you went inside. That's the best part. Now let's get out of here before somebody catches me doing it. Here's the back side of the theater where you can see where they've already dug into it. Started the demo process. It's too bad. Somebody's flying their drone over there. Little do they know I was just in there. One week later at the United Artists Theater, you can see that they've still got this big, huge hole, gaping hole on the side. And they haven't really touched much of the other theater detail, especially around the proscenium arch there. But you can definitely see that they made some progress over here on this side. I was here last weekend and it looked much different. We had to wait the workers out today, because look at this. This is the lobby, the curved lobby I was showing you guys in the video last week. It's all gone now. All open sky. You can see some of the detail up there. That's about it though. As we climb up the stairs here, guess what? Now you can't get any higher. The stairs are gone. It's so crazy, the stairs are lit. Here's the other side. You can see the theater through there, but guess what? No stairs. Goner. If you go out here. Okay. Goner. Goner. God, it's nuts. Can't even get upstairs to the balcony anymore. We made progress fast on this. This will be all gone within a week. See, remember this? I showed y'all, it's done. And this was actually where I stood. I went over here and showed you guys the curved lobby, all the detail plaster and stuff. Look at that. All gone. nuts I literally fell through the stair right there on that stair 
It's got my shin real good too. Not not too bad, but yeah, it didn't feel very good. You can see they're just done. Stairs are gone. This part was pitch black last week. Now it's all naturally lit because of the demolition. Look at all that natural light coming in. That used to be the circular lobby area right there where the plaster's still at. And then this part was incredible. You can still see the face up there. The maiden barely hanging on. That maiden's gone over there. And that maiden's still intact. And that brings us to the end of the United Artists Theatre video. With the historic theatre now demolished and the high-rise building being renovated, we felt that doing this video was an absolute must. The entire experience was emotional, especially as Detroit lost another piece of history. However, there has got to be room for both progress and growth. Furthermore, we hope everyone liked the video. And for more photos, check out the website at AbandonCentral.com. Thank you all. We truly appreciate all the support.